You know, you've talked about Raekwon and his body obviously being the best since you've been here. How will you measure this year whether he takes that next step? And also, with a player like him who obviously clogs the holes and you can't fully measure him on stats, do tackles for loss or sacks make much difference for you in evaluating him? Because he obviously doesn't have very many through three years. Yeah, I think, you know, first thing for him is just like, this may sound crazy to you, but we're literally focused on the day. You know what I mean? We're focused on Wednesday's practice. We'll, we'll get to Sunday when we get there. In terms of t- statistical measures, I think alignments and scheme can dictate uh, whether a player should have more or less. You know, like when you're head up on the center and you're taking on double teams and we're aligning you in fronts where that's what's going to happen, it's tough. However, as a defensive lineman in any system, you want to create negative plays. So that's definitely a point of emphasis. And, uh, you know, I, I think he's done a great job so far this week. And, you know, we're full pads today, so hopefully he can continue that. You have a really deep defensive line for a couple of years now. How does, like, the conditioning of week one compare to the rest of the season when it comes to snap counts? Do you have to be more cognizant of how fresh guys are for week one? Yeah, I think I think it's really game plan oriented. Like you playing a team that runs more, that passes more. How are we using those guys? Um, you know, what roles, what alignments, those type of things all factor into it. Uh, but I, I you know, we we put a heavy focus on conditioning, especially out here in the heat, and you know, all those type of things. And I think so far, uh, where we're at going into today's practice, we're pleased with where the guys are. This is an interesting game. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously we're, we're a different team. They're a different team. Uh, I think, you know, they have a phenomenal offensive line. You know, I think it all starts up front from Trent Brown, you know, Wynn, Wayne U, Andrews is solid in the middle. Cole Strange is a great, great player. I mean, in the preseason, he's been phenomenal. Uh, the uses of the, of the tight ends uh, blocking, the receivers cracking, and the running backs are fall forward backs. Uh, it, both Harris, Stevenson, Montgomery, all these guys, uh, their whole team's bought into running the football. And so it's going to be a big challenge for us. Obviously, you've, you've lost Adam. Uh, Brent Scarlett, obviously, not here. You add Trey to your group. What skills do you think he's going to bring? Yeah, I think Trey's biggest asset is probably versatility and familiarity with a lot of the scheme stuff. Uh, I think. You know, he's a guy that, that plays hard, plays with great technique, and he's got a knack for taking the ball away. Um, and, and so far, he's been awesome to work with. With, with Raekwon and, and his size, uh, how is he able to play with leverage? And, you know, what, what goes into that? Yeah, I think uh, it, it starts with bending at the knees is a big thing for him, and pad leverage. Like any D lineman, whether you're 6'1 or you're 6'7, like if you're 6'1 and you stand up, you're going to get knocked out of there. You're going to tell him that you need to be able to play with great knee bend, ankle flexibility, and you've got to be in a proper stance to be able to come out of your hips because that's what generates the power. Uh, and I think for Ray, that, that's a big focal point. You know, it, it, some may see that as a disadvantage, but I see his length as a huge asset. Um, and that's the one thing. At, at six seven, he's got long arms. He's powerful, um, and, and he can bend with his size. You know. And, and contact balance and playing with a great base and those type of things all factor into that. Coach Christian Wilkins named a team captain. How excited were you for him? And then just kind of talk about his leadership skill set. Yeah, I definitely was excited for him. You know, uh, any, anytime you, you watch a guy go, I wasn't here year one, but year two, year three, and now going into this year to, to for his teammates to see him as that uh, is a good thing. You know, and I, I think the way Coach McDaniel did that was awesome. Uh, you know, and, and for Wilkins, it speaks to his body of work in practice, off the field, uh, in that locker room, you know. And so it's great for him. You know, he's a vocal guy, but it's a different kind of vocal, you know. Speaking of, of being vocal, he, he's known for not being shy about voicing his opinion on the field to teammates or opponents. Do you think in this case maybe it helps him play better? I don't know. I think just general philosophy, and, and this is from our head coach, is the guys need to need to be themselves, and we try to create that environment in the D-line room. I love the guy. You know, if, if that helps him play better and that's what it is, man, let's give that to everybody. We saw, obviously, with him a big jump. We saw a big jump with Christian last year in overall production, tied for the league, league among defensive tackles uh, in tackles. Do you see yet another level? How eager to see, are you to see, whether he can take even a higher jump? 
Yeah, I, I think there's always more to get more to get out of a player, and him specifically going into you know this year four. I, I definitely think so. I think uh, a lot of times though, he may be in in schemes where you know what it's not his play to make. Maybe it's him taking on the double, and I think just buying into the scheme and the system like he's done uh, over the past couple of years is all we're asking him to do and keep flying around, and I think the plays will come to him.